This doesn't feel like technology. It feels like something alive. A surface soaking in sunlight, scarred by heat, yet somehow healing itself. No tools, no wires, just chemistry at work, quietly undoing damage the moment it happens. These aren't the solar panels we're used to. They don't crack and fade. They adapt. And not just for a year or two, but possibly forever. The secret? A material that knows when it's breaking down and fights back. Not in a lab fantasy, but in real stress, real heat, real life. So is this the last solar panel you'll ever need? Let's find out. The real enemy of solar panels. Solar panels are built to last. That's what we've been told. And for the most part, it's true. You'll find them on rooftops, deserts, even floating on water, working day in, day out for decades. But over time, something quiet happens. The sun, ironically, begins to wear them down, not in a sudden collapse, but in a slow erosion, a dip in efficiency here, a fracture too small to see there. It's not just the sunlight, it's the heat, the cold, the moisture, the dust. These tiny enemies chip away at the cell's ability to do its one job, convert light into electricity. 1% lost a year doesn't sound like much until you hit year 10 or 20, and that loss starts to cost. Repair isn't easy either. If a single cell in a module breaks, replacing it is usually out of the question. You don't fix solar panels, you replace them. Which brings up a question that solar engineers have started to ask more seriously. What if panels could fix themselves before the damage gets worse? What if they didn't need saving at all? Nature already solved this. The idea sounds futuristic, maybe even too optimistic. But nature has been doing this for millions of years. Consider a leaf. It soaks up sunlight just like a solar panel. But here's the twist. The molecules inside that leaf, the ones responsible for photosynthesis, are constantly damaged by the very light they capture. And yet, the plant doesn't stop growing. Why? Because it repairs itself over and over without pause. That mechanism was the inspiration behind one of the first real experiments in solar self-repair. A team at MIT took cues from photosynthesis and tried to mimic it using synthetic materials. They built what they called a dynamic cell, not with silicon or glass, but with carbon nanotubes and light-sensitive molecules suspended in solution. It wasn't powerful, but it worked. The cell could tear itself apart and reassemble, much like how a plant regenerates its damaged parts. It was more concept than product, but it proved something important. Self-repair in solar technology wasn't science fiction. It just hadn't matured yet. That early spark set off a wave of research. What if, instead of resisting damage, a solar panel could respond to it? What if wear and tear became part of the process, not the end of it? Nature already had the blueprint. Science just had to catch up. Enter Hubla, a chemical that heals under pressure. That catch-up might have arrived quietly, with a name that sounds more like a sci-fi acronym than a chemistry breakthrough, Hubla. It's not a single material, but a carefully engineered blend of molecular bonds designed to activate when things go wrong. Heat, humidity, and environmental stress, most materials to decay under those forces. Hubla doesn't. It wakes up. At its core, Hubla acts like a microscopic repair crew, not one that waits for permission, but one that knows exactly when and where to get to work. The way it does this is almost poetic. It seeks out the tiny imperfections in a perovskite solar cell, the kinds of defects that grow over time and drag down efficiency, and it smooths them out, again and again, as if the panel is learning to protect itself with no outside help. To understand how powerful that is, think of a solar panel like a highway for electrons. Every crack or surface defect is a pothole, slowing traffic, scattering energy. Traditional panels have no way to fix those cracks. They just endure them. Traditional panels have no way to fix those cracks. They just endure them. Hubla, on the other hand, fills the gaps as they form, keeping the flow fast and clean. 
What makes it even more remarkable is that this healing doesn't cost performance. In fact, it enhances it. Cells treated with Hubla didn't just maintain stability, they improved. Even under accelerated aging conditions, they held on to their efficiency far longer than untreated ones. In real numbers, that could mean panels lasting not just longer, but stronger, delivering near-peak power even after years in the field. And the best part? Hubla's healing response is automatic. No switches, no tech support, just chemistry doing its job in silence. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Space is brutal, and that's good news. If you want to know whether a material can survive, send it to space. No rain, no moisture, no atmosphere. Just raw, unfiltered radiation and temperature swings that would destroy most electronics in days. That's exactly why space has become a proving ground for the next generation of solar panels. Perovskites, the same family of materials used with Hubla, have shown promise up there. They're lightweight, flexible, and more efficient than traditional silicon at capturing light under extreme conditions. But there's one problem. They're fragile. Radiation doesn't just wear them out. It punches holes in their structure, breaks chemical bonds, and floods the system with noise. So when a team in Sydney announced they'd found a way for these solar cells to heal themselves in orbit, it caught attention. Not just for the achievement, but for the method. Their panels didn't need repair kits or maintenance bots. They used heat, simple thermal energy from the sun, to trigger a process called annealing. Under this treatment, the broken molecular structures realign. The panel resets itself. The most fascinating part? This healing happened passively. Damaged layers recovered on their own, and efficiency shot back up to where it started, in a vacuum, with no hands on deck. It's the kind of resilience that changes how we think about energy systems, not just in orbit, but back home. Because if a solar panel can withstand space and come back stronger, imagine what it could do on your roof. Space, with all its violence, is showing us the future. Not because it's comfortable, but because it isn't. And that's exactly the kind of environment where the next generation of solar panels must prove themselves. How close are we? Here's where things get a little more grounded, literally. While these self-healing solar panels sound ready for the spotlight, most of them are still backstage. The truth is, almost all of these breakthroughs, Hubla, annealing cells, even radiation-resistant perovskites, are still in the early stages of development. They've passed some tough lab tests, sure. Some even handled thousands of hours under simulated sunlight and heat. But lab success isn't real-world survival. Out in the wild, panels face unpredictable storms, dust, wildlife, mechanical stress, and long-term degradation over decades, not weeks. That kind of testing takes time, years, sometimes longer. Then there's scaling. A prototype is one thing. Manufacturing millions affordably is something else entirely. Can Hubla be integrated into mass production without breaking the bank? Will these panels fit into existing mounting systems? Can they work side by side with silicon modules already in place? Solar energy isn't just about the panel itself. It's a network of infrastructure, wiring, inverters, installation processes, and financing models. A revolutionary material won't get far if it doesn't play nice with what's already here. And cost remains the elephant in the room. Silicon is cheap, well understood, and widely available. Any new technology must compete on price, not just performance. Breakthroughs often stumble not because they fail technically, but because they can't outcompete the economics of the old way. So how close are we? Closer than ever, but there's still a gap to cross. And it's not just technical. It's practical, it's political, it's financial. Why this changes everything. If that gap ever gets crossed, the consequences could ripple far beyond the solar industry. Imagine solar panels that don't just last 25 or 30 years, but keep working efficiently for twice as long. No slow fade, no costly replacements, just a clean energy source that quietly maintains itself. That kind of durability shifts the math entirely. 
It means fewer panels manufactured, fewer installed, fewer ending up in landfills. It means lower maintenance costs, more stable returns, and energy systems that become truly set and forget. It also helps address one of the more uncomfortable truths about clean energy, waste. Solar panels are recyclable, but it's not easy, and most don't go through the process. The longer they last, the fewer we need to replace, and the smaller the pile becomes at the end of the line. More than anything, though, self-healing tech opens the door to energy independence, not just for countries or corporations, but for individuals. A rooftop array that fixes itself isn't just efficient, it's liberating. You don't need a technician, you don't need constant upgrades, you just need the sun. That changes everything, quietly, permanently, radically. The sun doesn't wait, neither should we. The sun rises every day, whether we're ready or not. It doesn't pause for better tools or perfect timing. It just shines, and the energy is there for the taking. What we build to catch that light matters. And right now, we're on the edge of something different. Not just stronger solar panels, but smarter ones. Materials that don't surrender to time, but respond to it. Systems that aren't patched when broken, but prevent the break entirely. It's not just about pushing efficiency numbers higher. It's about building an energy future that doesn't age the same way the old one did. One that lasts. We're not there yet, but we're getting close. And maybe, just maybe, we won't need to replace our panels ever again. Thanks for watching. If this glimpse into the future of solar sparked something in you, stay curious. These breakthroughs are just the beginning. Subscribe for more deep dives into the tech quietly reshaping our world. Until next time, keep looking forward and keep asking what might be possible next.